Good afternoon all. Today I want to add this to this. So this circuit diagram here is just a couple of op amps. Now the top one is a non-inverting isn't it because we're going into the positive and the bottom one is an inverting op amp uh, because we're going into the negative and our feedback resistors are from output to negative. Well, they are in both cases, aren't they? Of course. So what does this do? Well, it takes the voltages at this point and this point, and on this top one, it scales it by a factor of 12 down to five. So 12 volts at this point here will look like five, well, will be five volts on the output because I've got a 24K input resistor and a 10K feedback resistor. This one down here scales it similarly 24 to 10 or 12 to 5. I'll probably go for these higher value resistors. But in addition, this one inverts. And that's because the voltage on this capacitor is negative at this point here with respect to ground. And I want the output to be positive with respect to ground and scaled 0 to 5 volts rather than 0 to minus 12 volts so that a microcontroller can read these two voltages. These two voltages will end up both being positive with respect to ground. So what's on these two inputs? Well, actually, these are connected together. I might as well draw that in. So they are the same signal, and it's this CP signal that goes off to an electric car while it's being charged with an electric vehicle supply equipment, EVSE. Now this signal here goes between plus 12 volts at the top and minus 12 volts at the bottom and is typically a, well it is, a one kilohertz square wave with typically a small uh, high period and a long low period. Here is zero volts. This is plus 12 volts and this is minus 12 volts. But these voltages can change because this signal is being driven by this device here through a 1k resistor. So by putting in a, another external resistor on here, we can force these two signals to pull in towards this zero volt, I should mark that, zero volt potential. So what's this for? This is so that um, a microcontroller, I'm of course talking about Arduino, can measure this top voltage and can measure this bottom voltage, which is negative, by simply putting these two voltages through these two op amps. Uh, this one just scaled 12 down to five, and this one both scaled and inverted. Now, fortunately, this can be implemented with a dual op amp. Uh, so it's only an eight pin device. Now, the only bit of prototyping area I've got left, which could take a dual op amp is up here. So I'm gonna place an eight pin socket there. Um, these diode capacitor and one meg resistor uh, circuits are already on here, actually, they're here. So you've got one diode pointing in towards its capacitor and one meg resistor, that's this circuit up here. And you've got this other diode, this is the CP line down here, um, pointing backwards towards its capacitor and resistor, which is this circuit here. So the diode, capacitor and resistor uh, elements are both in there. So all I'm building actually are these op amp elements. Now it's a shame they have to be up here because my capacitors are down here, but it's not a major problem. I'll just run flying leads across to here. And all I'm interested in is measuring these two outputs, um, making sure they don't go over five volts. They shouldn't do because the maximum voltage here on CP is plus 12 or minus 12. We then have diode drops. So we're going to lose 0.6 volts here. So the maximum voltage on this capacitor is going to be 11.4. This one minus 11.4. And when you scale 12 volts to 5 volts, you'll get something a little bit less than 5 volts. So everything should be within the uh, scaling for the op amps and also the scaling for the microcontroller, which is going to measure these two signals, both of which um, 
are between 0 and 5 volts. So they can be measured on two of the analog inputs of an Arduino. Right, I found this strip of turn pin socket, so let's cut that into two four pin arrays, if indeed it will tolerate that without flying across the room and making an awful mess. Oh yeah, that's okay, that's a four pin array. Uh, that's a five pin, but I'm gonna cut it down. And the chip I found is a JFET input op amp, it's a TLO72. That'll do these quite high impedance inputs because I've got a one meg discharge resistor on these 100N capacitors. Uh, that's why I went for the high value resistors in the end. Also, there's no such thing as a 5K resistor, but there is such a thing as a 24K, I think. I'm not sure if I've got any, but quite sunny today, which I'm sure you can see which is making photography. Why isn't this melting? Because I'm not hitting the <laughs> solder onto the end of the iron. Yeah, making the photography slightly tricky. But uh, let's just get this chip soldered in and then I might have a think about improving the light contrast ratio to improve the video photography quality. Can't see very well what I'm doing anyway. Now pin eight needs plus 12 volts, so well, that's nice and easy. There's one just there, I can route that up to there. Uh, pin four needs minus 12 volts, which I think is on the bottom end of this potential divider here with these five resistors. So this wire here can produce minus 12, route it round to there. I'll do those next. Now this circuit needs a resistor to ground and ground is available, it's this line running across here. So I think I'll make this um, non-inverting op amp down the bottom here and the inverting op amp up the top here because there's no ground nearby up here. But then this circuit doesn't need a reference to ground other than that one meg which is already in circuit down here. That's my justification for putting uh, one circuit on the bottom of this op amp and one on the top. Let's get on with it. So I need some pin numbers on here. Uh, positive input is three, negative input is two, and output is one. And on the other op amp, uh, positive is five, negative is six, and output is seven. Okay, I'll use those numbers to wire the op amps up. Well now look what I found in a box marked resistors, which were obviously some I bought on eBay some time ago. I found these 10k and 24k. That's what I need for my circuit. I'm putting the resistors in here so that the accessible leg goes to the output pin, pin one here on this side and pin seven there. That means if I need to scope probe these later on, uh, the outputs are far more interesting to me than some sort of point <laughs> at the front. So that's why I've put the resistors in that way round. Right, that's all wired up apart from putting sort of connection points, test points, a bit like my zero volt and 12 volt test points um, for the outputs of these two op amps. So for the moment, I'm just going to have to go onto these resistor legs. Now, the next thing I want to know is if I put 12 volts from my bench power supply set of 12, uh, no, 10 batteries, 1.2 volts each onto these original connection points, thus back feeding the 12 volt power supply, Will it blow up said 12 volt power supply? Only one way to find out. Let's do it. Okay, wires connected to 12 volt power supply. Let's connect that. Now, the other thing we should see when I connect and disconnect this is brief pulses on these two relays because the measured voltage on the comparators briefly, um, as the voltage on these resistors goes up and down, we'll pull these relays in. So connect, didn't see the green, disconnect, I did see the green flash, connect. Uh, so no smoke, that's a good sign, no smoke coming from this power supply, 
and no smoke coming from my new op amp. So now we need to start looking at the voltages on the uh, outputs of the two op amps. And we should have about five volts in each case. So let's check this one, pin one. Quite difficult to hold that on there. Ooh, 11 volts. That's not quite right. Let's check this one, pin seven. Um, that one is 4.48, which is correct. But this one is wrong. That one's not uh, being ratio, ratio metrically adjusted down to 5 volts. They should both be positive as well. That one is 4.49. This one isn't 11.05. So I've done something wrong. What have I done wrong? So on pin seven, which is the output of the inverting amplifier, I've got there, um, this is 10 volts per division. Can we see that? So that's about half division. So that's about five volts, which is correct. On the non-inverting amplifier, so here on pin one, we've just got 12 volts. And that should be scaled by these two resistors, 10K and 24K. So I should be getting a similar sort of five volts here. So have I got my non-inverting amplifier circuit wrong? I'm going to have to check. Now I've just noticed in the equations for the non-inverting amplifier, the gain is one plus this resistor over this resistor. So if this is, um, 5 over 12, let's call it a half, the gain of this circuit is one and a half. So that's probably why it's not giving me the scaled output that I want. So how do I get the gain of a non-inverting amplifier to be 5 over 12 or sort of around about a half? Uh, I'll have to rethink this. What I really wanted here on the non-inverting op amp is a high impedance buffer to this peak follower well maybe the answer then is simply to put the output straight back into the negative input a unity gain buffer and then put the potential divider on the output of the op amp and then measure the point between the upper and lower resistors so i need to have a strategy rethink but uh for today, I think that's going to be it. So cheerio.